Hey guys, what's happening? Alright, so I have another i3 or a uh, Prusa Mini here. Um, yeah, I've actually fixed this. It's probably like my 10th Prusa. And this is the second time this one's come back. And uh, so I finally convinced the guy to switch over to a BMG extruder. Um, yeah, all these printers that come in here have the exact same issue, all these little minis. It's this extruder design, doesn't work right. So, uh, this extruder head, the nozzle, creates too much back pressure. And it basically makes this, this is a single drive extruder. So, it just basically cuts into the filament. So, every single one has had the exact same issue coming here. So, um, decided to do something about it. Actually, I saw this on Thingiverse. Let me show you a little thing here. I was actually going to design one. Um, but then somebody had already designed one, a, a decent one already. So here they are. So basically you're, you're using that basically a BMG um, extruder, uh, the gears. So you, you, I basically, you could, it's cheaper just to buy the whole kit. Because all I need is the actual gears out of here. Yeah, I just need this stuff. And I'm going to replace that with uh, the internal gears. So inside here, let me show you that. All right, so really the main thing we need is this gear and this gear, and obviously the extruder gear, this gear here, the one that actually fits on the stepper motor right there. So you're basically getting all this stuff and all you need is these couple components. So what you want is you want the dual drive gear set up right here, put in better light. Yeah, you just want the dual drive. So it grabs a filament from both sides. Yeah, so in early, it was actually really common on early 3D printers was uh, the single drive extruders. They would just cut, they'd tear through the filament. Especially with the Bodum setup. The Bodum setup exaggerates the problem because, you know, you have more slack in the tube. You have more back pressure. And, uh, you know, especially these things, this design, whatever this design is, I have a lot of issues. So, this issue right here. So, um, you got to really dial in the retraction and couple other things so but hopefully um, this BMG I haven't done it yet with this printer but you know I mean it seems like every single time I take this apart right I can see what's exactly what's happening like there's film is stuck in here right and it just cuts through the filament so so a couple different ways you can alleviate back pressure you can actually print to a little higher temperature you know maybe changes the offset just a slightly bit and you'll bring it a little bit higher um, all right so I gotta turn this around all right, so I've worked on a lot of Prusa printers, and every single one is kind of a headache to take apart. Like the extruder systems on the i3s, like uh, it's overly involved. Right, so I have a printer that's going to act up. I'm hoping I can just show you the root cause of the problem here in these printers. If I can get this thing out. All right, so there is, so it's a single drive extruder. So it's a single gear hob, which then is pressed against a bearing right there. So, try to keep everything organized in the thing here. That way, in the case customer ever wants to go back to this, they can. So, since this is a, well, it looks like the Prusa is actually gear reduction as well. Um, I know the E steps are typically a BMG extruder, is a 415 E steps. So, I'm going to have to be able to change that. This gear looks like it's a little bit bigger, you know. So, I'm going to actually, the bigger the gear, the more E steps. Depends on the actual ratio. I hear background noise prints in right now. All right, so this is a really cool design. So I need to set the uh, gear hob. So if you're not familiar with BMG, it's not, they're not usually like this. They're like, actually like that. But I actually have designed systems where I did it reversed. So I should just, uh, it's always a 1.5 millimeter. Uh, So, I'll try to do this with one hand. That should fit right there. And you just basically set it. Alright, so we're getting on the, Well, basically, what you don't want is you want to be in the flat part of the gear. See how it kind of comes up back like there? So, that's actually like a, like a cutting saw, like on a, on a, on a what's it called? On a um, lathe. There's a, uh, like a little saw that comes through and cuts it. I forgot the name of the tool. Um, I might bring it up 
maybe a little bit more. And That's we take the cover that came with the BMG kit. There. Yeah, hopefully I'm not going into too much detail here. So two um, M3 screws here. I couldn't find one that came out of here that would actually fit in there. So I actually had to go through my pile and get some, a box. Um, all right, so then this goes like here. Let's go again. So one thing you might need to adjust, if you're not familiar with the BMGs, see that little set screw right there? See how the, the hob gear here is not lined up with that hole right there? So I'm gonna move that over slightly. Maybe a better look at it. So now I have it lined up. The hob gear, the teeth right there, are lined up with the hole, the feeding hole. So make sure you print out the lever too. Even though they look the same, they're different. This right here, see this? So most of the ones you see on like uh, Thingiverse actually have like this notch right here. Whereas all the ones you buy online, I mean the ones I've seen, I've never seen the one with a notch on it. So I gotta push that pin through and take it out and transfer over to here. I almost forgot, you're going to need to have a brass insert for uh, basically to hold the lever in place. There should be a little hole in it. Uh, there it is here. So i got to feed with my solder iron a brass insert in there. I think I've filmed this process many times with the brass insert. So you're just basically like a soldering iron and you just put the, the thing on the tip for there and heat up the solder iron and then you can just push it right into the plastic. There's a better representation of why it's the superior See how the double hob gears? Well, grabs it from both sides. Actually, you have three more brass inserts here. One, two, three. And that actually clamps the part together. Like that. And then, they must have made a, like a revision change because I noticed that this only has two mounting holes. Like there should be a third mounting hole here. So I'm just gonna do a two. Because it's not any really any sort of like load of pressure. Alright, so one thing this kit didn't come with is this little thing right here. Um, what's funny is that since they have different revisions of this printer, it's like they have different parts. So um, I'll put links down below where I can get all this stuff. BMG extruder, the original project files, and um, the inserts, all that stuff, everything you need. Oh, that just goes on like that. So there's three screws, there's three screws in there. Alright, so that wasn't apparent when I put this together. But that 2.5 um, or some M3 screw right there is preventing this latch from coming up. I'm gonna see if I can take it off, put something else on there. Maybe a recess. I might have to um, cut and put a uh, chamfer in there. Yeah, so now I should be able to get it open like that. Oh, um, this around. How the hell do those guys get this little thing on there, that brass insert? Um, Alright, so I'm going to flip this around and see if we're getting power. i got to pull this little filament out. I'm going to cut the, that brass thing off and stick it into this extruder thing here. Alright, so I got my traditional Mylan printer. I can actually calibrate the E-steps via the LCD. Um, so the command is M92 uh, E415 because it's a 3 to 1 gear ratio, um, gear reduction. So I need to find a, a, a USB cable to my computer or I can actually add that to my star G code in your slicer. But I'm going to see if I can do an M500 and save it permanently. Alright, so here's a program called Pronterface. It's been around for a long, long time. You can control the printer access. Let me show you that. So you can go here. I can control that. Um, see? So we actually used to use this stuff back in the day. Um, like the original 3D printers actually ran on a USB port. Um, and you actually ran off your computer. <laughs> um, my screen here. So see M503? That should actually send the command and report back what the configuration is. Alright. So it needs a good and good um, signal here. So let me do, maybe I can do this. Okay, I want to do M92 E415. So M92, set the extruder, E steps 415. Okay, 
and then M500 is to save the configuration on the EEPROM if it's available. See. All right. So that should save it. And I am going to do another, do another M503 and see if it's saved. And there it is. E415. So that's the route, the right amount of E steps. Yeah, first is, I don't know. I'm not really. Be definitely annoying. Uh, sometimes I don't like when they over simplify things. I gotta get the tone. Yeah, this is a. Uh, I actually work on a lot of printers for kids. Um, so this is actually for a pretty motivated kid. So I um, want to get going for him. Yeah, I mean, I wish I was exposed to this stuff when I was a kid, man. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't have any of this stuff. This is like science fiction, man. Um, yeah, we hardly even had computers. So, you know, one thing I never tested is they actually the extruded direction. So I know the E-steps have changed, um, but it's in the same orientation, and the gears were very similar, so hopefully I don't have to do that. Um, in Marlin, which this printer runs, um, you can either do it in software, you can do it in the firmware, like when you compile the firmware, you can do it there. Um, I can also even just rewire the motor. I can switch the A and B, you know, the coils, how they energize. Alright, so, yes, this actually is a reverse. Alright guys, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to manually reverse the motor. Sucks as I can't do it here, so I have to take the, get down to the board. Take this off, get into it, hopefully. Yes, it's becoming kind of quite the headache. I don't make any money in these printers. <laughs> I'm gonna make a little. I mean, I don't make it. I mean, I might as well do my, my IT job. <laughs> All right. Um, I gotta find the extruder, and then I'll. I'm gonna just. I'll show you how to reverse them. Well, at least it's labeled. That's the extruder. So it looks like it's clipped in here. So I have to take those. Oh, that's a really headache to get out of there. Um. I first need to figure out which of the coils, and I gotta reverse the coils. So I just gotta flip them around so they, uh, so there, there's basically, depending on what kind of stepper it is, how many poles there is, but um, there's typically two coils in there, right? They go on, off, on, off, on. That's what, that's what spins it on and on, spins it around. I won't go into too much detail. There's other videos on how to do it, but I need to find the coils, what color the coils are with my multimeter, and then I just gotta reverse them. So what you do is you find the pairs that have continuity, you know? And then you know each each wire that well once you find the continuity between the pairs, then you know that's actually a coil. Well, I mean, you guys actually have these pieces of printers. So one coil is the red and blue, and the green and black. So I'm going to switch these around so they're the opposite of where they currently are now. So the green and black will be on this side. The green and black will be on this side, and the red and blue will be on that side. Alright, now that I got the uh, extruder going the right way, I'll zip tie the, the wires down when I'm done. That way it won't work before I totally, totally button it down. Alright, so now I'm going to do a calibration cube. Some alcohol. So I was able to load the filament, it's spinning the right direction. Do this purge. Um, Alright, so I need to go back. I don't know. It looks like it still has a S. I'm going to keep my USB drive in there. In case I gotta go back because I also want to make sure when I power it off and I power back on, my 415E step is saved. So typically, you normally know, M500 saves it to a deep run. Alright, so I did a quick calibration cube in Cura. And I did 30 script layer lines. Um, I mean, every single printer is different. I mean, they all function the same way, but they all, you know, they're all different. I mean, different firmware, different settings. Some try to make it really easy. Some don't, you know, I actually prefer the old school. If I have to use Marlin, not Clipper, I mean, Clipper is superior, all these things. But if you, I have to use Marlin, I actually like the old, uh, the old school screens, you know what I mean? Because you're interfacing directly with Marlin. Um, I think I've mentioned that before in other videos. But yeah, if I'm using Marlin, I like the old school, like, black and white screen. Just because I can control, you know, a stepper driver firmware or a current. 
a lot of different things you, you can't do with one of these little you know color screens. Alright, take a look. So I'm doing 30 skirt layer lines and I'm using the little live Z adjust. I mean, I mean this is definitely kind of cool, you know, it's not, you know. Alright, so I, I, I will usually be something when I first mess with the printer, I, I'm down and I'll, I'll do like 30 skirt layer lines. And let's see what I'm doing. Okay, it's still moving. Looks like it stopped extruding. Alright, well, these are the things I gotta figure out. You hear that clicking? Usually when I hear a clicking sound, that's not usually a good sign. I don't know, flip it around, see what's up. Alright, so I just sort of tighten it down a little bit. Get that a little bit loose. That's why I fix so many different 3D printers that I kind of know it was, when you hear a certain noise, <laughs> you know what's up. So as soon as I heard that popping and clicking noise, I knew there was something about the extrusion. Alright. Yeah, I've actually fixed hundreds of 3D printers. Yeah, so my first print was a fail, but it was actually my fault. This got, I mean, I'm just, this thing's just sitting here. It got bound up on the PTFE tube. And, uh, alright, so I'm just gonna let it finish. Just, uh, so when you, anytime you get like a BMG, especially if you 3D print the actual housing, if somebody, because it's tight, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's tight, so you kind of need to kind of work on the gears a little bit. Plus, also the filament path. It kind of needs to open up a little. The abrasiveness of the filament will kind of open up the the filament path. So I'm going to print out another one too because I want to have a successful uh, cube. All right, guys. Sorry for the motorcycle out there. So I'm going to do a firmware update. Um, I don't know what's up with the Prusa, but the M500 command won't save my M92 commands from my extruder. So. Um, I powered off this morning, powered it back on. I wanted to see if it saved the changes and under extruded. So the default is about 315, 325 east step, so it's off by about 100, so it's under extruding. I'm trying to get this where the customer doesn't actually have to go into their G code and re, uh, redo it. Um, so I'm going to do a firm update, see if, uh, and a lot of people have complained about the uh, M500 not being, not working for Prusa. It's horrible. Alright, well, that's not good. I did the bootloader. Yeah, the bootloader was from one to... Come on, man, what the hell? All right, so I did get the firmware fixed, but... So I actually just read there's actually an experimental... Um, because I obviously M500 won't work, so I can't... I'm trying to make it so it's easy for the customer. So they don't have to go in their slicer settings and deal with the M, uh, M92 command. So if they ever slice a file from a different computer, it's going to have the... It'll be saved in the actual board firmware. So hold down. And that should bring it into extruder steps. And 425. No, 415 for the 3-to-1 uh, gear ratio. Save and return. Yes. So I'm going to go back and just verify. So after the bootloader firmware is updated. Yeah, I, I grabbed my own flash card. Let it fall it before pull it. I didn't know if there was something wrong with the flash card originally, like when it got corrupted. So I just formatted a new fl a flash card and uh, copied it over again. Um, Okay. Uh, settings. I want to verify hardware setup. I want to go into advanced mode. Yes, 415. All right, cool. All right, so I'm going to go back and uh, do my test calibration queue again. 
and yes, I want to print the calibration cube. All right, so here my, this one failed. Uh, last night I had a thermal runaway. So this printer has uh, all kinds of issues. Um, this was my fault, like last night. Sorry, I was working on greasy stuff, but. And then this is the under extrusion, the 325 E-steps. So you can tell that it's not, I mean, I can tell just by looking at it that it's not right, 100%. All right, we'll give this another go. All right, there it is. Good extrusion. So, all right, well, that's how you put a BMG extruder on a Prusa i3, or no, Prusa Mini, i3 Mini. Um, I did the firm updates. Um, I had to reverse the direction of the motor. I don't know if you can do that probably with the firmware, but um, yeah, I, I physically reverse the coils. And, uh, all right, so it's ready for a pickup. All right, yeah, hopefully this will resolve that uh, issue. You know, that's always, they all come with the same exact problem, so. All right, I'm going to remove the spool, and I'm done. Cool.